Welcome into the Oklahoma's video studio for the Week in Review. I'm Dave Morris. Lots of news this week, uh, locally and nationally. We'll focus on the local parts here in this segment. This week we heard from Thunder basketball players as they had their media day earlier this week. Uh, we heard from two candidates running for governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt and Drew Edmondson. They had a debate and a forum at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. And we learned the Oklahoman was sold to Gatehouse Media. Also this week, as we bring in Don Mekoy to talk some uh, business news and some other developments around the, uh, the metro area, we learned, Don, that Michael Kors bought Versace for $2.1 billion. Yes. On the same morning, Sonic was sold for $2.3 billion. So I ask you, on the value of, jokingly, Versace, Sonic, apparently Sonic's higher value. Oh, well, clearly. I, I think that's, that's, that's pretty easy to see. I could live without my Versace handbag, but <laughs> well, I could not survive without well, my cherry limeade. Well said, well said. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that really came out of the blue. I mean, these things are uh, usually, you know, done in private and then suddenly, uh, you know, burst upon the scene, and that's exactly what happened in, with Sonic. Sonic's a company that was founded in Shawnee, Oklahoma, a single drive-in. It has grown to the point now it's a publicly traded company. They have 3,600 locations across the United States. Uh, and, and it was bought by the parent company of Arby's and Buffalo Wild Wings, $2.3 billion. Everyone who owned Sonic stock when this was announced basically made 20% that day on their stock. Uh, and frankly, Sonic stock had been performing pretty well over the past year or so. So uh, Sonic shareholders are going to be very happy. They still have to approve the purchase I don't imagine that's going to be uh, any problem. What's the uh, setup for Sonic? Are those a lot of franchisees, such as Buffalo Wild Wings, that's a franchisee situation. Is that similar for Sonic? Exactly, yeah. A lot of Sonic's uh, uh, locations are owned by franchise okay. uh, people. Uh, the company owns some as well, but I, I think it's mostly, most of their operations are run by franchisees. And, and they, they, the company, like McDonald's and Buffalo Wild Wings and many others, they provide all the products, they, they, you know, they purchase the stuff from the company, they give them the marketing uh, that we're all so familiar with, and, uh, and, and it's just grown and grown. Uh, so yeah, Sonic's been doing really well. And, and one of the interesting things that we learned on the day that the deal was announced was uh, that Sonic is going to become a private company, it'll no longer be publicly traded because it's going to be owned by this other company. But they say that it will continue to be independently run, that the leadership of Sonic is going to continue to be the leadership of Sonic. Now we'll see if there may be some changes. There's always, when you have two companies come together, as, as we have learned, uh, there's always some changes that take place. Uh, but what they're saying is that Sonic's going to continue to be Sonic. And I guess that's another question. Uh the headquarters of Sonic, right down there in Bricktown, very nice uh, presence there along the uh, the canal. What are we hearing about that? Th they said that we're going to keep our headquarters okay. in Oklahoma City. Yeah, so that that's a good thing. I mean, they're yeah, they're right down there on the canal, uh, right next to a, a Sonic, where you can actually a sit down Sonic. There's not very many of those, but there's right. one there you can walk in and sit down and eat your food. So, yeah, that'll be great that they're staying there. So I guess this leads us to further hard hitting questions of uh, Can you roller skate? like a car hop of Sonic does occasionally. Can I? Yes. Well, you know, when I was younger, I could roller skate. I haven't tried in a long time. <laughs> now, I will say this. My daughter works for Sonic, okay. I should, in the interest of full disclosure. And she's a car hop. And uh, she would like to get on skates. There's a program that you kind of go through. I had and no you idea. Trained. Yes. Uh, because I can't uh, imagine that's easy when you have a tray of drinks, even, right, even if it is nice and, you know, and, and secure. There's, there's curbing and all kinds of you know things that you have to deal with, uh, but uh, they like that because it's part of the brand. But yeah. also the car hops like it because apparently the tips are a little better when you skate out. Interesting, very nice. You mentioned the cherry limeade off the top. I got to admit that's probably my favorite drink. Oh, yeah, it's the best. And yeah. cheddar peppers. <sighs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and, and the ice. Everybody's like, how are they going to oh, keep yeah. the ice? The yes. cubed ice. Will the ice will stay. A couple other business uh, items that we heard from this week. There was a lot of trees coming to various parts of the urban core. Yeah, our Steve Lackmire, who covers development downtown, uh, has had a couple of stories recently. Uh, one, that they're going to plant about a thousand trees along a fairly barren strip of the Oklahoma River. Uh, as the Oklahoma River has kind of developed into what it has become, uh, all the vegetation that was there a hundred years ago has kind of gone away. So they're trying to make that more of a bucolic place. They're going to put in park benches. There's going to be trees, so there'll be shade. They've already got, you know, there's sidewalks there. A lot of people run, bike, 
walk down there. I know so, you're a cyclist. Do you go down there? I, I, I used I, to be a cyclist. Okay. But, but yeah, and I, I, but I have ridden the, uh, the river before, and it, it, that is kind of an issue that there's, there's almost no shade. Yeah. So that'll be great. You know, that archive photo we ran that day, it's amazing how much trees there were. Oh yeah, it was a very verdant area and it, it looked completely different than we remember it now or right. even before they made all these maps changes. You know, it was always just kind of a, a sort of depression in the ground that sometimes yeah. had some water in it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, that should, it should be a big improvement. And, and Steve also uh, found out that as you know, the Oklahoma City Boulevard is, is continuing apace and, and, and it's looking really good and parts of it are open, uh, they're going to landscape uh, both ends of it and he had some examples of what that might look like uh, with, with planting hundreds of trees and then he, as they get it all connected as it goes all the way through uh, downtown they'll kind of landscape that as well and they, and they want that to, you know obviously they want that to look really good uh, but it, it, what, what we saw was interesting because there was you know there was trees and there was vegetation in the median in some places and along the, the, the sidewalks, which are going to be quite broad along the uh, boulevard. So that'll look good, too. You mentioned the Oklahoma City Boulevard. Parts, uh, stretches of it are already in play. And by the way, that's a great way to get from the downtown Oklahoma City area uh, east towards the Boathouse District. That works out great. But also, as we mentioned, Thunder had their media day earlier this week. We're not that far away from Thunder basketball season. That'll be a key area to have open up and running, the Oklahoma City Boulevard. Oh yeah, yeah, that runs right next to the Chesapeake Arena. And the boulevard's gonna come more into play even for people who don't get downtown as much as perhaps you and I do uh, as, as the convention center gets built right. and the, uh, the park uh, continues. Uh, and that's another thing that, you know, I think today they're planting trees in the park, in Scissortail Park, which we're still a ways away from that actually being done. They're, they're really in the midst of construction, but trees are starting to go in there and there's going to be a lot of tree, a lot more trees downtown, thousands well, of them. Speaking of parks, uh, Steve also had a story about where Stage Center used to be. Yeah, you know, uh, they tore down Stage Center uh, and, and there was a, a fair amount of opposition to that uh, because it was a really unique, uh, iconic building, uh, but they tore it down because OG&E was going to build their headquarters there. There was going to be four towers in this grand plan and which is all uh, gone on the wayside, by the wayside. So what we ended up with was an empty block uh, in the middle of downtown. So now, since that plan has uh, is been, the plug's been pulled on, as far as we know, it's never gonna happen. I never say never, but it's not gonna happen anytime soon. So they're, they're, they're repurposing it. They're putting in like a, a mini soccer field. They're putting in a basketball court. They're trying to activate that area. You know, it's right across the street from, from John Rex Elementary. Uh, it's right next to the Myriad Gardens, yeah. so it's, a, it's an area that it, it's been surrounded by fencing. It needs to kind of rejoin downtown, and, and this seems like a really good way to do it. Good stuff. It, you know, activating that area, people just gravitate towards things. We see at the bocce ball court in Midtown, we'll see it with the carousel over at the Myriad Gardens. When, there's, when there are places like that, people know what to do with it. That's right. Yeah, people use it, and, and there's a lot of people down here, and, and more and more People are looking for things to do. If the weather's nice, they want to get out, and and this seems like a great uh, idea for, for keeping this. Uh, maybe it'll be kind of a placeholder like we've done with some things. Eventually it might right. get developed, but that may be years from now. So let's get it, let's use it. Makes sense. Uh, one thing on the way out here, we have a big story coming up of changes to the state's liquor laws. That's uh, something your crew has been working on. Uh, many people in the newsroom have been working on for this weekend. Yeah, both our retail reporter David Dishman and our food editor uh, Dave Cathy uh, have naturally come together to do a series of stories. I think most Oklahomans are aware that come Monday there's going to be some big changes in the way that liquor is sold in Oklahoma. Look, we'll have strong beer that you can buy uh, in places like uh, supermarkets and you'll be able to wine there as well. You'll be able to get cold beer in liquor stores and liquor stores will be able to sell things besides uh, spirits. Uh, so uh, they've taken a, a really overarching look at all this. The first story is about the history and then it's going to deal with all the details. We're going to talk about the tax implications, the consumer implications, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. 
uh, we're going to have stories in the Oklahoma and we're going to have stuff on News OK and a great video package yep. that uh, your folks put together as well to go along with that. It's good stuff. Paige Dillard producing this segment is uh, working away on that right now and doing a fantastic job. It is interesting learning about the history, the state's history, as most states have an interesting history when it comes to alcohol, but then also the distribution process behind the scenes. It's confusing. It's very confusing and it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's not easy to explain either. Uh, because there's, there are there are various laws, and Oklahoma's uh, history of liquor laws will will make your head spin. If uh, particularly maybe younger people who aren't aware of, you know, the fact that it was 30 years after prohibition was repealed in the United States before Oklahoma repealed prohibition, although alcohol was widely available uh, throughout prohibition in Oklahoma, and uh, so that that kind of uh, th they tell that tale uh, in, the, in this series of stories and it, and it really is interesting and we're, we're kind of catching up with a lot of the other states. So look for that, plenty of coverage about the uh, state's changes to the liquor laws. That coverage begins in Saturday's editions of the Oklahoma and online at newsok.com. I mentioned the governor's debate. You can watch that in its entirety if you want. It was a good debate moderated by our Chris Castile this past week. After that, he sat down with Kevin Stitt here in the Oklahoman's video studio. So we'll have a profile of Mr. Kevin Stitt along with his wife, Sarah. Uh, that's in Sunday's editions. Drew Edmondson, the Democratic candidate, that'll be a profile for later editions. So look for all that stuff. Lots of good stuff coming up. You bet. Don, thanks for your time as always. All right, thank you, Dave. These stories and more in upcoming editions of the Oklahoman and on our website at newsok.com.